This is technically a part two to the massage parlor stories I did a while back. I figured I'd run it back as I wanted to encourage you all to treat yourself to such a service, but unfortunately after watching these stories, this may do the complete opposite. Anyways, before we get to our three spa stories, here's a joke. Why did they pull a lawsuit against the spa for their wax treatment? It was a ripoff, get it? <laughs> Never mind. Here's the animations. I recently went out of my comfort zone to get a massage. My back had been killing me for the past several weeks and my buddy kept telling me I had to go to this particular spa in town. He hounded me about it every time I complained about my back pain. Not only was he adamant that a massage would do wonders for me physically, but he was also very persuasive with his insistence that a lot of the masseuses were super hot chicks that knew what they were doing. <laughs> with that in mind, I thought that if I could get one of those nice looking girls to put their hands on me, I wouldn't have to be worried about the awkwardness I was usually concerned with when I considered getting a massage. Unfortunately, my friend didn't let on that I needed to call ahead in order to book an appointment with a specific masseuse. I walked in at what must have been their busiest time of day. The lobby was full of people waiting. Immediately, the receptionist started crowing at me and making me feel like I'd made a mistake by coming. We only have one therapist available for walk-ins. The wait time will be at least 45 minutes. If that doesn't work for you, then you'll have to make an appointment. No, no, that's okay. I can wait. I just really need some work on my back. Alright, I'll put you on the next slot with Josephine. What kind of work do you need? I'll let her know. Um, the pain is really bad. Chronic, too. I guess I need the deep tissue. Okay, and your name? It's Gabe. Have a seat and Josephine will call your name when she's ready for you. Thank you. I took the last available seat, stuck between some sweaty construction worker and an overweight secretary. I was already having my doubts about the experience. I'd just gotten yelled at for walking in, but I couldn't even leave if I wanted to. It didn't even cross my mind that the name Josephine was a little off. For someone who was supposed to be a hot young girl, not until the waiting was up and Josephine revealed herself to me. I tried not to show my disappointment on my face, but my stomach truly sank to the floor when I saw her. Gabe? She wasn't just old, but she wasn't even looking good for her age. She had this awful hunchback and this drooping, crooked jaw. Her head looked way too big for her body, but the glasses she wore were somehow still disproportionately wide for her face. Even worse were her crusty, yellowing teeth that made it obvious she'd never been one to care too much about oral hygiene throughout her many years. But the thing that surprised me most, even more, than her bad Baggy, wrinkly skin were her hands. They were crooked and arthritic from decades of massaging people for a living, and it was honestly a wonder how in the world she was able to still do this job with her hands in such a state. We went through what I imagine is the basic small talk before a massage. It was like talking to my grandmother after avoiding her for a couple of years. Except I was half and laying face down on a table. But then she began the massage, and immediately I knew that it wasn't what I had imagined. I hadn't really had the foresight to understand what deep tissue meant, but I was learning in that moment as this sharp old woman began to dig her jagged elbows into the pressure points all over my back. I groaned and squirmed, but she was unfazed. She even put her weight on me to keep me steady. I bit my tongue and tried to bear through it, hoping that it would eventually feel good if I got through the initial shock of it. That did not work. It only got worse. At some point, it felt like she was straight up just punching me in the back like some bad CPR. Then she did something I didn't know she had the agility for. She climbed up onto the table and stood on top of me, walking up and down my back and burying the heels of her feet into the notches of my spine. She then did the unthinkable and began jumping on me like I was some kind of trampoline. I could feel so many cracks in my joints, but it honestly felt more like my bones themselves were breaking. I thought they only did massages like this in Japan. I learned from the best. It was obvious she had no intention of going easy on me. And no matter how much I tried, I couldn't get used to it, let alone enjoy it. When she started walking on my neck and cutting off my windpipe, I couldn't take it anymore. I broke free and sprang up from the table. 
Okay, geezer, that's enough! Are you trying to kill me? You said deep tissue, so I'm getting the deep tissue. What did you expect? I don't know! I've never done this before! Why doesn't anybody explain this stuff? All I want is something nice and relaxing that's going to ease the pain in my back, not make it worse! Jeez, how is anybody supposed to enjoy that? Suddenly, the old lady looked really hurt by what I said. In that moment, I regretted yelling at her. I hadn't meant to make her feel bad, it was just the whole thing was turning out to be way more stressful than it should have been. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just confused. I, I ordered the wrong thing is all. No, no, you're okay. I'm sorry there was a misunderstanding. If you want something relaxing, I also specialize in a mud bathing treatment. I was skeptical at first, but she was very thorough with her description of how a simple scrub of special mud all over my skin would exfoliate my pores and permeate natural analgesics all throughout my body. It was supposed to be relaxing and pain relieving and revitalizing and... Well, the way she put it made it sound very much worth getting covered in mud. I went ahead and agreed. She had me lay down on my back, then put two slices of cucumbers over my eyes and told me to breathe deep and relax. She left me alone with the ambient music for a few minutes before beginning the treatment. The first thing I noticed was that the mud felt a lot warmer than expected, like it had been sitting in the sun instead of the cool dark place in which I had imagined it would be stored. When she started spreading it over my face, however, is when I noticed just how not right it smelled. Mud ought to smell mostly like nothing, and if anything, it should smell like the soil, the earth, but whatever it was, it smelled like a barn. It found its way up my nostrils and burned with its pungency, and then I finally realized it wasn't mud. It was unmistakably fecal matter. <coughs> Fresh feces. I was in shock, but then things took a turn for the absolute worst. All of a sudden, there was a huge clump of this lumpy, disgusting crap being shoved in my mouth. This old woman was trying to cram her excrement down my throat and suffocate me. <laughs> And I couldn't even open my eyes. I clawed at the cucumbers, but they were super glued on. I'd rip out my eyelids before I could get them off. The fight or flight boiled over, and I burst up from the table, shoving the old hag to the ground, and running, stumbling, colliding with every table and corner before finding my way out of the room in my blindness. Help! Someone help me, please! I can't see! Help me! From then on, I have to block out the memories, the embarrassment of all those people surrounding, seeing me in that state. Even if they were helping me, it was too much to bear. It's still too much. As for the curmudgeonly old witch that did it to me, it still baffles me to say this, but she was once again surprisingly agile. She made a run for it out the back door of the parlor, and is still at large after driving off in a car that's older than me. Come to think of it, I don't even know what I would charge her with, if they found her. As a woman who worked at a spa, I'm no stranger to the unsavory characters who try to solicit immoral acts and behave inappropriately with the employees. It seems like every woman I've ever worked with has some kind of horror story on the subject of obsessive, misogynistic men, and I am no exception. And I hate to say this, but what happened on my table was so awful that it ended my career as a massage and acupuncture therapist. Still, that is where it began. I'm not at liberty to use his real name. But I will freely use the placeholder name of Herbert, as it rather well describes both his personality and physical characteristics. He was extremely old, old enough to be my great-grandfather, though he probably looked older than he actually was. He had a grotesque bulging pot belly that stuck out even farther than his malformed looking jaw that was stricken with a horrible underbite. I'm sure his record-breaking deformities caused him significant chronic pain, 
because he had weekly appointments at the spa that he never missed. Unfortunately, like a lot of creepy old men, he had picked out one woman from all the other therapists and refused to get worked on by anyone else. And in his case, I was his special gal. What's worse, he seemed to self-medicate his pain with alcohol, as he was always, and I mean always, under the influence. This is supposed to be against the rules, but considering people with obvious dependencies, we usually allow them to do whatever they need in order to sit still. Unfortunately, this meant I had to constantly deal with the stench of booze that always emanated from his body. As you can see, we make a lot of accommodations. We also have a jacuzzi that is openly available to all of our clients. However, to some, it seems to be an invitation to forego any respect for privacy or modesty. In Herbert's case, he would spend 20 minutes in the tub before every session, wearing this tiny worn out speedo that he's probably had since the 60s. He would always wait until the last minute, then come in for a session right after his soak. He always wanted to start with a full body massage. I don't know what it was exactly, but something about that wet, rubbery, wrinkly skin always felt like I was massaging a dead body, except he could talk and request to be pleasured. I would always refuse, but he would never get the message. You people never seem to understand the request of a full body massage. I always have to go home and finish the job myself. Does that seem right to you? Come on, Herbert. I don't want to hear that right now. Well, you wouldn't have to hear it if you didn't leave the need unsatisfied. What do you say? For the millionth time, the answer is no. Just relax, will you? As with any story of a spa professional dealing with inappropriate behavior, outside perspectives probably wonder why we put up with it all. Well, the answer is commission and tips. In other words, money. The nastiest, most make-you-crawl-out-of-your-skin customers are the ones who think that going for the most expensive option is how they're going to get what they want. Of course, that isn't how it works, but we let them shell out until they realize that. Herbert always wanted acupuncture after his massages. Acupuncture is a delicate, time-consuming process, and it requires a lot of experience, intuition, and patience. This makes it a big moneymaker for spas, in case you didn't know. The longer it goes on for and the more needles are used, the higher the price becomes. And I've never seen anyone take as many needles as Herbert. At a certain point, every single actual acupuncture point would be covered in needles, but Herbert would just keep asking for more. I knew it was risky, but every acupuncture patient signs a waiver freeing us of any liability. So by the policy of the establishment, we fulfill every request we reasonably can. Eventually, he'd be covered head to toe, every square inch of his body protruding with needles, probably a thousand of them. But even then, he would still be getting up to his usual antics. You know, you've poked me so many times. Will I ever get a chance to poke you back? You know you'll never get the chance. So can you stop asking? Oh, you're so mean. I'll convince you someday. As bad as it was, at a certain point I had the whole ordeal worked into my routine, and I was making bank off it. However, one night, it all came to an end. He had come in drunker than ever before, going farther than he ever had before. He even reached out and tried to grab me at one point during the massage, but I slapped his hand away. I almost kicked him out for it. I should have, but some part of me was so desensitized that I hardly cared after the moment passed. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, just a stronger stench of booze and a bit more of an unhinged attitude. We went through the whole routine, and once I was done using just about every acupuncture needle in the entire spa, I left him at the table to wash my hands a precautionary step in between the application and removal of the needles that helps to prevent infection. All right, Herbert, I'm going to give you a few minutes to let everything soak in. I'll just be over here cleaning some things up. Don't move, okay? Oh, don't worry about me moving, Missy. I'm as stiff as a board. I'm sure you are, Herbert. I'm sure you are. However, even over the sound of the faucet, I could hear the rubbing of skin against the rubber of the table. I knew he was moving, but at first, I figured he was just adjusting himself to get more comfortable. <clears throat> a modern day woman sure is a sight to behold. Excuse me? I turned around ready to scold him, but in the process, I startled him. He was far <gasps> closer to the edge than he should have been, and when he jolted at getting caught, he stabbed himself in the side with a needle, causing him to wince and squirm and suddenly lose his balance on his elbow. And then, he fell off the table and smacked the floor face down, digging every needle into his body. Acupuncture needles are long, thin, and very hard. They can easily dig through several inches of flesh and find their way between small gaps in the bones if used improperly. But in the case of an accident like this, it was worse than imaginable. I screamed for help and instinctively ran over and knelt beside him. In a panic, I turned him over, trying to take the pressure off the needles. I've been told since by medical professionals that this was probably the wrong thing to do, as it shifted the placement of the needles inside his body 
twisting and dragging, causing them to tear the tissues and worsen the bleed. And bleed he did, like wringing out a sponge full of red. Somebody call the cops! We need an ambulance! No matter how fast the paramedics could have arrived, I don't think it would have been fast enough. The needles were everywhere in his body, in his heart, and in his lungs. There wasn't a chance. He bled out so quickly, right before my eyes. I watched the life leave from his face. Since then, I've quit massage therapy, and I can't imagine ever returning to perform acupuncture. Despite how gross Herbert's treatment of me was, I still feel guilty for being the one who put the needles in his body. I'm not sure if this is really lucky for me or not, but since he didn't have any family or next of kin who cared for him, I was never sued for anything relating to the incident. But if I ever was, I don't know if I'd fare well in court. Customers would come here for one purpose, to relinquish importunate woes constantly haunting them after a rough day. So one day, I noticed a bizarre middle-aged woman staring through the glass window of our spa, drooling like a maniac. At first, I thought she might have been a homeless person wandering around, so when she set foot in my domain, I instantly barred her from advancing with the help of our security guard. As expected, it set her off ranting about human rights. Then, as she approached the receptionist, she threw the money across the table and desecrated our hallowed grounds by taking a seat on one of our comfy chairs. Impatient, she said, Um, excuse me? Is there any staff on duty? I can't wait here forever, you know. No. Seeing how she frightened the other customers, I briskly walked towards her and said, Hello ma'am, you wanted a foot spa? She didn't respond. Instead, she left me with an icy stare and the constant twitching of her lips, which... <laughs> made her look hilarious. During the ongoing service, I couldn't help but notice her nasty teeth, yellowish in color, filled with leftover meat and green leafy vegetables stuck in between. And if that wasn't enough, I simply couldn't stand her breath's repulsive odor, overcoming the lavender-scented humidifier next to us. Then, rubbing her feet with essential oils, my hands protested against the rough, scaly edges of her skin and a slimy substance flowing from her pores, which appeared to be pus. She must have noticed because she struck me with her phone and said, Do you have a problem with my feet, miss? I decided to apologize and focus on getting the job done. So, upon cleaning her nails and giving her a foot massage, I pampered these pitiful feet by gently laying them in a detox foot spa machine as she sat back and relaxed. She left happy with her experience. However, I hoped she would cease to return. So, when she dropped by the following day and asked me for specifically to conduct the same service, I was utterly disappointed. Every day, the woman would smile to reveal such awful teeth, and with countless acne growing on her face day by day, it only made it harder for me to look at her. Unfortunately, she wasn't only ugly on the outside, she was also terrible on the inside. She'd regularly gossip about her colleague's promotion and talk behind her back. Then, when the woman felt like I wasn't paying attention to her rants, she would <gasps> hit me with her phone or the magazine, making me the laughingstock of the entire parlor. I've always wanted to be the apple of the eye, but not this way. This freak of nature was ruining my reputation, and I was determined to save whatever dignity I had left in this job. So, when the same customer dropped by again, I recommended a different type of service, which allowed me to apply other ingredients. When I explained the benefits to her, she was instantly enthralled. In the days that followed, her foot condition only worsened, despite all the treatment she was receiving. So naturally, this made her furious, as she sat, waiting for me to approach her, I could see fungi engulfing her feet, which came in the form of sores and blisters that would burst, creating golden brown patches like cereals glued to her skin. The fungal bacteria, which reminded me of a skin infection called Bullus impetigo, appeared to be crawling from her feet to her legs, giving her the appearance of a zombie. This time, her attitude was more revolting, and her scent was now unbearable. She threw a glass of water 
water at me and asked in a condescending tone. Why are you wearing a face mask? You never wore that before. Take that off! I clenched my fists, trying to control my temper. What right do you have in deciding what I choose to wear? She laughed <laughs> like a madwoman and said, You got some nerve, girl. I'll give you that. Then, she leaned closer, the stench of her breath even more prominent. But I can make you go viral, and your boss will certainly fire you. Since none of us were allowed to reject customers' requests, especially from a regular like her, I continued to provide her my services. When I sat to massage her feet, she made a forward gesture and reached out for my mask. I told you to take that off, didn't I? Not a moment too soon, she yanked it off and <laughs> Added. See? Now that's much better. I let her off the hook, plotting an idea to end this nightmare. However, none came to mind. Then, when she entered through those doors again the following day, I noticed it was just her and me. Oh, perfect. I initially told myself. However, as she sat on her favorite chair while I prepared the peppermint, Epsom salt, rosemary, and other entities for her feet tub, something hit me hard at that moment. Wait a minute. That's it. It's just her and I. I contemplated. I admit it was a dangerous thought, but somehow it made me feel a lot better. Then, moments later, the odious woman called out to me and said, Can't this service get any slower? I'm surprised the owner let you work here in the first place. I'm sorry. Was all I said. Then, with a smile, I added, I've done a bit more research, and I think I know what can make all that fungi go away. A conundrum filled her eyes as she scrutinized me, wondering why I was incredibly calm and cheery. Did your husband finally make it past a minute? You don't seem like your usual self today. Whatever do you mean? What's wrong with being happy? I said, my smile bigger than ever. We did the whole routine, of course. Then, as the minutes passed, she began to sweat profusely, followed by complaints. Hey, miss, are you sure this is going to work? Why does it feel like my feet are burning? That's a good sign, ma'am. It means the treatment is finally working. Then, moments later, she began to scream, and when she attempted to remove her feet from the tub, I advanced forward, holding her legs in place. You lunatic! What do you think you're doing? We haven't finished your treatment yet, so just wait a little longer. I replied as I felt my power grow. Soon, burning sensations turned to severe pain, causing the customer to spasm until the tub was filled with her own blood. When she finally passed out, I dragged her body to the back alley, where the contents of her feet were visibly deteriorated and was left with nothing but flesh and bone. I could tell that she was a goner from the overwhelming pain she must have endured. I threw her remains in a dumpster along with what was left of her feet, which was nothing but blood and liquid cartilage from the acid I included in the mix. Till this day, no one knows about my five-star service, and now that I've been promoted as manager, I'd make sure that we'd never encounter a customer like that again. I thought they only did massages like this in Japan. I learned from the best. Oh.